Welcome to a Bass Musician Magazine video recap, live from this year's NAMM show. The recap starts now. Okay, so, hey, walking the floor of NAMM, we just happened to run into a couple of bass players that I think we need to introduce to you all if you haven't met him. I love Anthony who calls himself here. Yeah, yeah. I love Smooth Groove, Anthony Joyner, and we've got Robert Green. I've been talking to these guys and they are real bass players who do the deal. You eat it, you sleep it, you breathe it. You're not like you're not like a guitar player who can't get a gig. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. As a bass player, well, that's why a lot of guitar players pick up bass, right? Because they can't get a gig. So, so I tell you what. First of all, what I'd like for you to do, and this is for Bass Musician Magazine, is give some of the tips and you know techniques that you've learned that have maybe helped you to rise a, a little bit above all of the guys who would like to be making a living playing but aren't quite there. And Anthony, I'm going to hand the mic to you and start off with you. Well, first of all, Robin and I, we're old school. We play the pocket, we play the groove. Our, our feeling is make the band, the artist, whoever's out front or whatever sound good by not playing a bunch of ish because yeah. that stops the band from sounding good. It's not about you. It's, it's about the band, it's about the whole group. And if you can get that in mind, which is hard for some young players to do, because yes. they all want to play a bunch of stuff. Yes. And I understand it, you learn it at home or in the practice room and you want to play it. I get it. It's just like if you get a Ferrari, you want to drive over 100 miles an hour. But the difference with that is, you will crash. And it's the same way in music, you know. We're both old school players and we play the pocket, we play the groove, we make the group sound good, and that's what works, not only in Nashville, all over the world. You know, that's why Nathan East and Marcus Miller and Victor and all those guys are so successful, because they play what's necessary first. And my thing I always tell my students is, if you groove it hard, they will let you solo. That's the whole thing. And it works with yeah. any genre. Any genre yeah. of music, everything. Yeah. I played all of it. Reggae, rock and roll, pop, country, everything. They've got to sound good and they've got to feel good. And it can only happen with you. Like I always tell my students, do you think these people are dancing to the drums? No, they're dancing to us. And that's how you see it. Go to a gig and see a band where the bass player is playing a bunch of junk. Nobody's dancing. They're sitting down at their tables, they're drinking, they're eating. But if you make that thing groove, they can't help it. They can't help it. You start feeling it. That's just the way it is. Hey, and, also, and I actually learned most of that from him. Oh, yes. Yeah, man. Well, hey, and also, for what it's worth, the vocalists are keying off of you, too. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It's got to yeah. feel good. It's got to feel good, or it's going nowhere. You know, that's the whole thing. Cool. So, yeah. I, I I hope that if you're a, a beginner or a younger bass player, you heard a little bit of that, because we have heard too many bass players that think you know he who plays the most notes wins. <laughs> you can't get paid by the note. I wish you could. <laughs> You could, but you can't. There is no getting paid by the note, exactly. And for what it's worth, I tell you what, we won't drop names, but but dude has had had some of the top gigs in the world. So um, he's talking from experience, not yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. It's it's great to be actually able to do this and make a living, isn't it? Yes. So what do you got? What do you, what are your you know kind of like bits of wisdom? I'm pretty much the same way Anthony is. I mean, I went to Japan a few years ago with Stonewall Jackson, one of the old traditional country artists, and we went out and we rehearsed. And first thing Stonewall did, not having played with a black bass player before, he turned around and looked at me the whole time we were rehearsing. Because <laughs> he thought I was going to get up and start thumping and all of that stuff. Yeah. 
And at the end of rehearsal, the drummer and him, they came up and says, man, I really like the way you play. I said, yeah, I just, I just stay out of the way. And the whole time I was in Japan, that's how Stonewall introduced me. This is Robert. He just stays out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's what you do. Yeah. You know, you, you supply the bottom. You're not a lead guitar player, so you don't play your bass like a lead guitar. You know, you take care of the bottom. You and the drummer hook up. If you and the drummer can hook up, everybody else is going to hook up. Yep. Yep. Cool. Well, I remember when I first arrived in Nashville, and I was very young, my first gig was doing sound down at the Bluebird Cafe, you know, the little, little, oh, yeah. little club in Nashville. That, yeah. And back in those days, it used to have a lot of bands. Now it's mostly singer-songwriter. Yeah. But they had a lot of bands. And one of the first bands I met there... Oh my gosh! Well, I have two stories from there. Well, one of the, what I I I was doing a quote jazz singer, right? And she shows up. She just sings a couple, and she was great. Sings a couple lines through the mic and says, "That'll be marvelous." And I'm waiting for her accompaniment to show up, right? And she says, "Oh, it's just me and one guy." And I said, uh, "Guitar player?" And she said, "No, he plays bass." Any any guess who the bass player was? Uh, David, no, it was Victor Wooten. Really? Victor, when he was about you know 16, 17 years old, and four string yeah. bass, yeah. and and she was doing jazz standards, right? Uh huh. And I was going, oh, how is this gonna work? Was that Annie Selling? It was, yes. So you know her, okay? And I and and so you know Victor shows up. I mean. He doesn't even bring an amp. He just plugs direct into the PA. He, you know, he says, I don't need a sound check. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> and, and just, I mean, played these big chords and everything and was just perfect. Yeah. But, but the other story I have with Victor is he was, was playing, uh, about a month later, he was down there with uh, a funk band. Uh, it, was not, it was not his brother's. And the drummer was the guy who, at that point, his gig was playing with Whitney Houston. You might know who that is. This would be like 80-something. And he brought in a kick, snare, a hi-hat, and a cymbal. That was it, right? And on the snare, he had writ written, and this has become my motto as a musician, if and it don't do nothing, it must groove. Sounds like J.D. Right. Blair. Sounds like who? J.D. Blair. What's he look like? Tall, skinny, black guy. That was him. Yeah, yeah, okay, that was, that was him. And that became my motto, and Victor was the bass player okay. on that. And so it was a three-piece funk group. And and again, man, it's like everybody was playing in the pocket so deep, it's like you couldn't see your way out of the pocket. They were so deep in it, man. You can't stop yourself from dancing. Yeah. First it starts with the foot. Yep. Then it starts here. You can't help it. Exactly. It's like exactly. Reggae. You can't help the dance when you hear reggae. And that's all reggae is, is pocket all night long. They don't play no chops. Unless you got the the wrong players on it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not I'm not saying anything bad about chops. I can play all of that crap. It's just when you're playing with an ensemble or a group, that's not your job. It's not your job. You know? It's like if you if you work at Burger King and you're on the fries, but you know how to make shakes, that's cool, but that's not what you were hired for. You were hired for fries, not shakes. You know, that's just how it works. And I'm not, like, again, I'm not knocking anybody that does all the fast stuff and everything. I'm guilty of it, especially in NAMM shows. I'm guilty of it. But, and I'm not knocking it. And I tell all my students, we're going to learn all of that stuff. However, there's a time and a place for everything. Cool. Well, I won't keep you guys any longer. You know, Nam is fast and furious, but thank you so much for taking the time to talk to the, the bass musician viewers and readers. Thank you, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And always remember the thing the bass player should do, first thing is hook up with the drummer. If those two guys hook up, everything else is going to come through. Yeah, that's your best friend. Yeah. That's your new wife. Yeah. <laughs> Words of wisdom. Thank you for checking out BassMusicianMagazine.com, the face 
of bass.